Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea and on this channel we do all things home, makeovers, DIYs, thrifting, all of that good stuff. Today's video, as you can tell by the title, is my kitchen makeover. This is a video that I have been really, really excited for. I am not a professional. I'm not a professional painter or anything like that. I am just a lady who wants a beautiful kitchen and is on a budget. So I have read a ton of advice from professionals and gotten a lot of tips and information from them that has been very helpful. So I will use that along my journey here. I know that this is gonna take some time for me, but that's okay. I'm excited to do this. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and let's get this makeover rolling. All right, so this is the before situation of the kitchen. We just got yesterday this brand new sink and faucet, which I guess I've reached that stage of adulthood where I get very excited over a sink. So the contact paper is here, and I don't know if you guys can really tell, but I feel like it looks kind of cool tone like blue gray I don't know um I'm gonna do that I'm gonna put this on the countertops we eventually want to replace the countertop but um that's just not something we're gonna do immediately we have other things kind of on the priority list so this is gonna be hopefully a good temporary solution until we do actually replace it this is also probably considered renter friendly because you can just peel it up when it's time to leave without any damage. So I guess I'll go ahead and start getting this on. All right, so the contact paper is on the counters. I did not finish kind of putting the contact paper down back there because I feel like the undertone of this paper is pulling a little bit blue, but that might be because of the oranginess of the oak in the cabinet is making it look more cool toned. So I'm gonna wait and see after the cabinets if I like it. If I do, I will uh, finish this part back off. If I don't, I may change the contact paper. But basically here are the cabinets that we're gonna be working with. So they are very standard, very orange, very oak cabinets. They're honestly not the worst I could have in a kitchen, but they're just not what I want. And I really think that it can make a big difference if we refinish these. So. That is what we're going to do. I will talk to you about the steps throughout the process, but let's go ahead and get these cabinets started. Here, I'm just going ahead and starting the degreasing process of the cabinets. Your kitchen gets a lot of grease on the cabinets, so you wanna make sure that you are thoroughly scrubbing these cabinets down. You'll wanna not just do the outside, but the inside of the frame as well. All right guys, I am on the floor right now. I have a box of paint samples with me and I have a cabinet section here and a cabinet section over here that I have cleaned and deglossed. I will get into that uh, a little bit later. But the reason that I did one here and here are because they get different sources of light and different amounts of lights in the kitchen and I want to get my paint samples on those two places to really see what the different samples look like depending on the light in the kitchen. While those paint samples dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and start removing the doors from the frame. All right, so I wanted to show you up close kind of how I'm deglossing these cabinets. Basically, I'm just pouring a little bit of the deglosser right on the cabinet. And then I'm taking my little sponge 
and it says to work in circular motions. And then I'm just taking a rag and wiping the product off, making sure that I rinse my rag frequently. All right, now it might be hard to tell a little bit because the sun is like streaming in on it, but I'm gonna try to show you the difference in a cabinet that hasn't been deglossed and one that has. All right, you see how that's kind of shiny? Like you're picking up that glare there. Now let me show you a degloss cabinet. All right, you see how just like, you can see the difference in the light that's coming in, but there's just no like shine on this. It's really just kind of the raw wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and degloss the rest of these cabinets. All right, it's the next day. Yesterday I did degloss all the cabinets so they are done. Now I'm gonna start grain filling them. So this is the part where if you're refinishing your cabinets, you can do one of two things. You can either sand them and then you can move on to priming and painting. What I will say is that if you do that and you have oak cabinets, you will absolutely see the wood grain through the paint. The paint's gonna sink into that wood grain. You're not gonna have smooth cabinets. And if you don't care, like if that doesn't bother you, go ahead and do that. You can skip the very tedious process of grain filling. Grain filling is basically to minimize as much as you can the wood grain so that the cabinets look smoother. So I did this cabinet last night just to test it out and it is going to have to be sanded down. But what you can see is that the wood grain filler kind of settles in to the grain and it's going to make it a little bit smoother when we paint it. This is going to require probably three coats and I'll have to sand it down in between. And you might be thinking like, I've watched videos with people who have made over their cabinets and they had oak and they just primed and painted and they looked smooth. I promise you, if you were up close to their cabinets or if they had shown their cabinets up close or in the light, you would have seen the wood grain. Primer and paint is not enough to cover wood grain. It will sink in, you will see it. So if that doesn't matter to you, again, go ahead, prime and paint. But if you want to minimize the wood grain as much as possible for a smooth finish, then you're gonna have to fill it. So how you grain fill cabinets is by taking some product and putting it on your spreader. I am then using the spreader to really push it into the grain. At first I'm going to go kind of opposite the grain and spread it across. I'm going to use my spreader to start scraping the excess product off. I'm just putting the excess on the side here because I will use it in other parts of the cabinet. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my spreader in the same direction of the grain, and that's really how I want that to finish. All right, you guys, I finished the rest of the cabinets, filling them in, and I just have to tell you, it is tedious. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these dry, and maybe I will be back later today, maybe not. Um, we'll see. Oh, hi guys. I don't even know how long it's been. This was tedious. And I know I said that in another clip, but like truly, I ended up grain filling and sanding three times. So I have one of the doors here. You can see what it looks like now that it is grain filled. They're definitely significantly smoother uh, than they were in their kind of natural oak state. So. That is good. We are gonna move on to primer today. All 
All right, so I have the backs of the cabinets all on top of these cups. You'll see that there were some cabinets where I could not get the hardware off when they were installed. They stripped the screws, so I just did my best to cover them, but the rest of them are off. So here I'm just spraying on the final coat of paint. The color that I chose is Neutral Ground by Sherwin-Williams and I did do both two coats of primer as well as two coats of paint and they just came out so beautifully. I'm really happy. Here they are dry and up in my living room and ready for some hardware. I also just wanted to quickly show you the cabinet frame with the paint color on it. So this is the different hardware that I'm going to be using for the cabinets and I will make sure that I link everything in the description box. All right, so I am going to start installing the hardware on the cabinets. What I did was I put a piece of painter's tape on the front because when you drill through, the painter's tape will just help to ensure that there's not splintering. You don't want your new beautiful painted cabinets to be splintering everywhere. So the painter's tape helps. I just created a little template and there's a couple holes on here just because the doors are a little bit different but basically what I did was I slid a tiny drill bit, drill bit through one hole, slide it into that hole, and then use my second hole to mark the template. doors have been installed or at least a couple of them have and this feels like such an accomplishment i can't wait to get the rest of them on and then move on to the next step all right i don't know where i left off with you guys last the next step is going to be dealing with this window if you notice there's a casing on the bottom but then there's really nothing at the top or the sides and i just feel like it looks unfinished like it doesn't look polished so I'm going to go ahead and build out a frame for this window and I think it'll just make it look much nicer right, so I cut the sideboards and I got them up there I did adhere both sides and next up I'm gonna do this top piece here okay so I have all my boards cut I have my other ones down there that piece at the top right now is just sitting there on top. The important thing to do when you're framing out a window is to make sure that you use a level to put these boards up, especially if your window like mine is not cut out evenly. So I'm just gonna lay out these pieces up here and finish framing out the window. All right, I got the last piece up top there what a difference this makes just framing out the window. Our window is definitely not even like I had said before, so you really just need to make sure that any boards you put up, you use your level. Okay, I have no idea if I told you guys yet that I put up some kind of vertical shiplap with my dad just for an accent in the kitchen, so I do have it primed as well as the kind of accent trim at the top is prime too, so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting that. Um, so now I'm gonna go and pick up a little kitchen island. I have really wanted an island for the kitchen, but I knew I needed a small one. I really wanted a small one. Our kitchen's very open and I didn't want to take that away, except I really did not wanna buy a new one they can be several hundred dollars and I just did not want to spend that. So I've been scouring thrift stores and Facebook Marketplace and this morning I found one on Facebook Marketplace. So I'm gonna go and pick it up now. All 
right, guys, I have some updates for you. I got the second coat on the for kind of vertical shiplap here. Obviously didn't finish like this section yet, but I got that on so that it is a closer match to the cabinets. And then I got the kitchen island built. I think last time I saw you guys was when I was going to pick this up. There's obviously not hardware on it right now. I didn't like the hardware that it came with, but I was able to get this new in box off marketplace. So I did have to put it together. And then the last update is, I don't know if you remember, but I told you that the contact paper that I had initially chosen was kind of looking blue. And I hoped after I painted the cabinets and kind of sat with it that it would take on less of a blue tone and I would like it more. That just did not happen. So I did decide to pull the contact paper up that I had and I did get new contact paper and put that down. I just, it like, it stuck out like a sore thumb. It really looked super blue and I feel like I did so much work on the cabinets that I just could not stand not liking the countertop. So I pulled it up and instead I put this. I just think that this looks so much nicer and it's so much more of what I wanted. So I really like the change. You guys, we are finally at the fun part of this makeover, which is the final details and styling. So let's get this started. We are in the home stretch here. guys we have finally finally made it to the end of this video so let's take a quick look back to see what this kitchen looked like before we started the makeover it was really basic it was builder grade nothing particularly special in here stainless steel appliances oak cabinets and this gray blue countertop that was just not very pretty. So wasn't the worst kitchen, but wasn't the best kitchen either. So finally, with that being said, let me reveal this kitchen to you. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. This kitchen makeover took me a really, really long time, but I am just so happy with the outcome. I love my kitchen. Even the temporary solution of the contact paper was just such a success in my opinion. I really like it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, do two things for me. One, leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite part was or what you think the biggest transformation was. And then also give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, you can subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, I will see you guys for the next one. Make sure you take care of yourselves in the meantime.